the Declaration of Our Broth, written in 1320. To the Most Holy Father and Lord in Christ, the Lord John, by divine providence, supreme pontiff of the Holy Roman and Universal Church, his humble and devout sons, Duncan, Earl of Fife, Thomas Randolph, Earl of Murray, Lord of Man and of Annadale, Patrick Dunbar, Earl of March, Malays, Earl of Strathern, Malcolm, Earl of Lennox, William, Earl of Ross, Magnus, Earl of Caithness and Orkney, and William, Earl of Sutherland, Walter, Steward of Scotland, William Sulis, Butler of Scotland, James, Lord of Douglas, Roger of Mulberry, David, Lord of Brechin, David Graham, Ingram Umbrail, John Menteith, Guardian of the Earldom of Menteith, Alexander Fraser, Gilbert Hay, Constable of Scotland, Robert Keith, the Marshal of Scotland, Henry Sinclair, John Graham, David Lindsay, William Oliphant, Patrick Graham, John Fenton, William Abernethy, David Weens, William Mushet, Fergus Overdrossen, Eustace Maxwell, William Ramsey, William Mowat, Alan Murray, Donald Campbell, John Cameron, Reginald Cheney, Alexander Seaton, Andrew Leslie, and Alexander Stroughton, and the other barons and freeholders, and the whole community of the realm of Scotland, send all manner of filial reverence and devout kisses of his blessed feet. Most Holy Father, we know, and from the chronicles and books of the ancients, we find that among other famous nations, our own, the Scots, has been graced with widespread renown. It journeyed from greater Cynthia by way of the Tyrian Sea and the Pillars of Hercules, and dwelt for a long course of time in Spain amongst the most savage peoples. But nowhere could it be subdued by any people, however barbarous. Thence it came. Twelve hundred years after the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea to its home in the west where it still lives today, the Britons it first drove out, the pits it utterly destroyed, and even though very often assailed by Norwegians and the Danes and also the English, it took possession of that home with many victories and untold efforts, and, as the histories of old time bear witness, they have held it free of all servitude ever since. In their kingdom, there have reigned 113 kings of their own royal stock, the line unbroken by a single foreigner. The high qualities and merits of these people, where they not otherwise manifest, shine forth clearly enough from this, that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our Lord Jesus Christ, after his passion and resurrection, called them, even though settled in the outermost parts of this earth, almost the first to his most holy faith. Nor did he wish them to be confirmed in that faith by merely anyone, but by the first of his apostles, by calling through second or third rank the most gentle St. Andrew, the blessed Peter's brother, and desired him and them to keep under the protection 
of that patron for evermore. The Most Holy Fathers, your predecessors gave careful heed to these things and strengthened this same kingdom and people with many favours and numerous privileges as being the special charge of the blessed Peter's brother. Thus, our people under their protection did indeed live in freedom and peace up to the time when that mighty prince, the King of the English, Edward, the father of the one who reigns today, when our kingdom had no head and our people harboured no malice or treachery, and were then unused to wars or invasions, came in the disguise of a friend and ally to harass them as an enemy. The deeds of cruelty, massacre, violence, pillage, arson, imprisoning prelates, burning down monasteries, robbing and killing monks, and nuns, and yet other outrages, without number which he had committed against our people, sparing neither age nor sex, religion nor rank. No one could describe nor fully imagine unless he had seen it with his own eyes. But from these countless evils we have been set free by the help of him who, though he affects yet heals and restores by our most tireless prince, king and lord, the Lord Robert. He that his people and his heritage might be delivered out of the hands of Joshua and our enemies. Him too divine providence and succession to the right according to laws and customs which we shall maintain to the death and the due constant assent as all have made our prince and king, King Robert. To him, as to the man by whom salvation has been wrought unto the people, we are bound both by his right and by his merits, and our freedom may still be maintained, and by him, come what may, we mean to stand. Yet, if he should give up, what he has begun, seeking to make us or our kingdom subject to the King of England or the English, we should exert ourselves at once and to drive him out as our enemy and some Serbia of his own right and ours, and make some other man who was well able to defend us our king. For as long as one hundred of us remain alive, never will we on any conditions be subjected to the Lordship of the English. It is in truth not for glory, not for riches, nor honours that we are fighting, but for freedom alone, which no honest man gives up, but with life itself. Therefore it is, Reverend Father and Lord, that we beseech your holiness with our most earnest prayers and supplant hearts, inasmuch as you will, in your sincerity and goodness, consider all of this and that, since with him whose vice guarant on earth you are there is neither weighing nor distinction of Jew and Greek, Scotsman or Englishman. You will look with the eyes of a father on the troubles and privations brought by the English upon us and upon the Church of God. May it please you to admonish and exhort the King of the English, who ought to be satisfied with what belongings to him since England used once to be enough for seven kings or more to leave us Scots in peace, who live in this poor little Scotland, beyond which there is no dwelling place at all and covet nothing but our own. We are sincerely willing to do anything for him, having regard to our condition that we can to win peace for ourselves. 
This truly concerns you, Holy Father, since you see the savagery and the heathen rage against the Christians, as the sins of Christians have indeed deserved, and the frontiers of Christendom being pressed inward every day, and how much it will tarnish your holiness's, holiness's memory of which God forbid the church suffers eclipse or scandal in any branch of it during your time, you must persevere. The rows on the Christian princes, for false reasons, pretend that they cannot go to the help of the Holy Land because wars they have on hand with their own neighbours. The real reason that prevents them is that in making war on their smaller neighbours, they find a readier advantage, and in making war on their smaller neighbours, they find a, a readier advantage and weaker resistance. But how cheerfully our Lord, the King, and we too would go there if the King of the English would leave us in peace. He from whom nothing is hidden well knows. And we profess and declare it to you as the Vicar of Christ and all Christendom. But if your holiness puts too much faith in the tales from the English that they tell you and will not give sincere belief to all this, nor refrain from favouring them to our undoing, then the slaughtering of bodies, the perdition of souls, and all the other misfortunes that will follow inflicted by them on us and by us on them will, we believe, be surely laid by the Most High to your charge. To conclude, we are and shall ever be, as far as duty calls, ready to do your will in all things, as obedient sons to you as his vicar, and him as the supreme king and judge, we commit the maintenance of our cause, casting out our cares upon him and firmly trusting that he will inspire us with the courage and bring our enemies to nothing. May the, high, the Most High preserve you in this holy church, in holiness and health, for many days to come. This was given at your monastery of our broth in Scotland on the sixth day of the month of April in the year of grace, 1320, and the 15th year of the reign of our king aforesaid, King Robert.